Today, we're going to be talking about positive psychology with wisdom and courage. So wisdom and courage are very interrelated. And here's a very good quote to show how we think about wisdom and courage. So this is from a Christian text, which is, God grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. So when we think about wisdom, for me, at least I think of someone who's older, who has a lot of life experiences, who has a lot of knowledge, they know maybe some sort of truth that, that other people don't know. And they're really able to guide youngsters and people who need uh, a lot of advice and they're able to give great advice. So one person I can think of is Gandalf right here. And so we're going to talk about some implicit theories of wisdom. And so what an implicit theory is, is it's studying the essence of a concept without actually observing anything, without observing any behaviors or things like that. So it's more of a theoretical approach. And so what they did was really interesting. They did a bunch of studies to figure out what do people think wisdom is. And so in one study, people had a bunch of different traits uh, that wise people do, and they had to sort out these traits into categories to come up with some of the categories of what really defines wisdom. And so what they came up with is that a wise person has exceptional understanding. They're able to judge and communicate very effectively. They have a lot of competence and they have a lot of interpersonal skills. And they also have social unobtrusiveness. And so another approach was the cultural historical approach in which they analyzed philosophers and their text and what they had to say about people who were wise. And they came up with a wise person knows difficult matters. They have superior knowledge. They have this knowledge that's applicable to life challenges. They're well-intended. They have a good nature. And they, it, wisdom is very difficult to achieve. And so then they looked at some of the wisdom experts and they interviewed them and they figured out, okay, what do wisdom experts think wisdom is? And so what they found was wisdom is a form of advanced cognitive and emotional development that is experience driven. So this is what the wisdom experts had to say. And so let's go to some explicit theories of wisdom, which is more observational in, in nature. And they're looking a lot more about people's behaviors and what they actually do. And so one major theory of wisdom is called the Berlin model of wisdom. And how they kind of define it, wisdom, is it's a way and a means of planning and managing and understanding the good life. So they have five criteria which makes up wisdom. So there's a factual knowledge component, which is the know what. There's a procedural knowledge, which is the know how to do something. Life contextualism, contextualism which is sort of knowing a lot about life and different stages of life and where you fit into that stage of life. There's a relativism of value, so being able to interpret other values and weigh them against each other when coming up with a, with a plan or a solution. And there's a recognition and management of uncertainty. So there's the five values. And so let's talk a little bit more about the Berlin model. So a wise person, given the Berlin definition, would be able to see a lot of different viewpoints and they'd be able to play with those different viewpoints to make arguments and construct ideas and theories about how those different viewpoints interact with whatever they're talking about. Additionally, a wise person will always try and act in what is the common good. And it's important to note that this is a Western concept, and in the Eastern concept of wisdom, there's a lot more emphasis on social relationships and uh, affect. And that is something that's very important for someone who's wise. And so it's important to note what wisdom is not, which is it's not your IQ and it's not your ability to be creative. Those can help wisdom, but wisdom and IQ and creativity might not even be correlated. And so how do we actually measure wisdom? So for the Berlin model and their theory of wisdom, they analyze the thought processes and sort of work through a question with the, with the person they're trying to measure wisdom of. And so you would get this sort of question. Someone receives a call from a good, good friend who says they cannot go on like this and they have decided to commit suicide. What might one take into consideration in this situation? So your ability to answer this question and to 
to add different viewpoints and to add different nuances and come up with a good answer is sort of how they actually measure wisdom. And these are all people who are skilled and qualified and they do this. They just measure wisdom in people. And so another aspect of measuring wisdom is the VIA, which you talked about a long time ago, I think in lecture three, measuring strengths. They actually have a strength that is related to wisdom. And so how does wisdom change as we age and what are some of the benefits of wisdom? So in the Eastern context, like I said, there's a strong emphasis in social relationships and that's very different than the Western context. So we just need to remember that as we go through these. So what they found with studying wisdom and age is that from the years 15 to 25, this is when the majority of people acquire their wisdom. And what they found was really interesting is that from when you're 25 to when you're 75, there's wisdom does not correlate with age. So you could have someone who's super wise at 25 and someone who is not very wise at 75. But anything above 75, wisdom starts to decline. And I assume that is probably due to some of the cognitive declines that just happen with old age, some of the cognitive diseases. So what are some of the benefits of being a wise person? Well, you have a better sense of self. You engage in less hedonistic pursuits, which can be detrimental. And you're able to reflect more and you're focused more on personal growth. And you have uh, wisdom is correlated with more life satisfaction. And you also have this ability to navigate life. I mean, that is what wisdom is. It's pulling together all these ideas and associations and different viewpoints and realizing where you are in life and really coming up with a good way and a very good and nuanced way to get to wherever you want to go. And so now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about courage. So when I think about courage, I think about someone standing up and defying fear and really leaving their comfort zone. I also think about someone who stands up for their viewpoints. So a good example of someone who is courageous, I think, is Batman. So we're going to go over some of the implicit theories. So what is courage? Well, they asked a bunch of people to just lay people to define courage. And they sort of shift, sifted through all their responses and came up with some commonalities, which is people think that courage is taking risks, defending beliefs, and facing challenges. And so lots of philosophers and lots of thinkers had come up with their own definition of courage, but one of the simplest definitions of courage is from Hemingway, and he says, courage is grace under pressure. So now let's talk a little bit more about the types of courage. So there's a moral courage, which is standing up for your beliefs. There's a physical courage, which is like facing a physical threat. You can think of ambulance workers or police fighters. There's a vital courage, which is your ability to stay strong and stay courageous and really fight through something like a disease or something like a chronic disease or a disease like cancer. And it's really your ability to get through that strenuous situation. And I can also think of vital courage could also apply to uh, people who are in the concentration camps. And so what they found with courage is that People who are higher on agreeableness and openness, they tend to have higher levels of courage. And courage can also is also sort of formed through modeling as we see other people be courageous. We sort of realize, oh, hey, I can do that too. And then practice is a big component of courage and obtaining courage. And so you might notice that there's no explicit theories of courage, and that's because courage has not been studied as much as wisdom has. Wisdom has really been studied a lot more than courage. So what are the benefits of courage? Well, first of all, let's just talk about one way you can measure courage, which is the VIA classifications of strength again. that They have a bunch of uh, strengths that are kind of related to courage, but not exactly courage because we don't really have a clear definition of courage as of yet. But courage has really been shown to increase your coping skills. And it's also been shown to boost your confidence. But that is a little bit nuanced because depending on the definition of courage you use, confidence and courage could be almost the same thing. 
And so now that we kind of know a little bit more about courage and wisdom, let's talk about how we can become wise and courageous ourselves. So first, let's, I want to talk about wisdom. And I think that a good way you can learn to become more wise is about learning about various perspectives and really learning more about the world and how people interact with the world and pursuing your own passions and hobbies. And then hearing those different perspectives and maybe even engaging in conversations where you practice the skills of being wise and bring all the knowledge you have, all the perspectives you have together to come up with a plan that is in the common good for people. And then how can you be courageous? Well, again, I think a lot of it is practice. And I think a lot of it is going to be deliberate practice, leaving your comfort zone and trying something new, something that you feel like takes courage. Doing that is going to increase your courage. And then you can also stand up for your own beliefs. That's another great way to be courageous. And so I thank you very much for watching this video. Please check the Discord if you're interested in joining our community. And thank you for watching.